I'm going to explain you what are options with a very simple example. Let's say I want to buy a home for $300,000 and I go to the seller and make a contract with him that I can buy this home for $300,000 in the next 5 years. If the seller agrees on this contract, he's not going to win anything. So he decides to sell the contract for you for $50,000. This 50k we call premium. So now I have the right to buy this home for $300,000 in the next five years after three years the real estate market went up and this home is currently worth four hundred thousand dollars so i can go right to the seller and buy this home for 300k why because you have a contract so i basically made 100k profit from this deal but there's the cost of the premium too which is 50k so from this contract i profited around fifty thousand dollars so this operation is a call option. Let's take another example. I have a business and it's operating well. Someone comes and wants 50% of the business. I value the business and it's worth currently $2 million. So 50% it's worth $1 million. For some reasons, the buyer did not want to buy the whole company. He just wanted 50%. And I got word if we don't agree on the business management, the business can fail. So I decide to make a contract to sell 50% of the company for $1 million and the right to sell the other $1 million in the next 3 years. But if the company performs well in the next 3 years and it's worth $6 million, instead of selling the 50% for $3 million, I need to sell at $1 million. But as expected, we were not agreeing on some business terms and the company was not performing well and it's currently worth 50% less. So I can take the contract and go to this guy and tell him that I will sell my other 50% for 1 million, but it's currently worth only 500K. Since he agreed on the contract, he needs to buy at $1 million. So I sell my shares and I made 50% return with this contract. And in trading, this is called a put option. So basically with the call option, you're betting that the price will go up and with the put option, the price will go down. So now we know that options have a strike price and we can set an expiry. I'll start explaining more in trading terms. The first few terms that we need to know is in the money, out of the money and at the money. When the stock price is above the strike price, that's in the money for a call option. But a put option is in the money when the stock price is below the strike price. Out of the money call option is when the stock price is below the strike price and for a put option is when the stock price is above the strike price. And you can guess what's at the money, it's when the stock price is equal to the current price. Each contract in options is represented by 100 shares. So if you see an option price at $2, that's 2 times 100, which is $200. So you're paying $200 for premium. Each price you see in the contracts, that's the premium. Those premiums will go up, further they go in the money, and the more they go out of the money, they will go down. So now I'm going to explain the difference between buying and selling an option. And in the next part, I'm going to explain the Greeks, which will basically understand how those premiums change depending on the current price and the expiry. So now you're just going to understand what's happening, but in the next part, you're going to understand much more in details. So let's start with the put option. When you buy a put option, your maximum risk is the premium that you paid. And your potential profit, they say it's infinity, but in reality, it's not. It can be really high percentage, but it's not to infinity. So basically with $2 premium, which is $200, you can control over $10,000 worth of stock. So if the stock went to zero, that's your maximum potential to make money. Because with the put option, you're betting that the stock price will go down, which is basically a short. In the next part, you'll understand much more how those premiums change depending on the stock price. And now selling a put option. Selling a put option is one of my favorite strategies and it has a really high win rate. So this is how it works. So currently let's take Apple is $125 and I can sell a put option at $100.
with an expiry of 3 months. So when you're selling this put option, you're basically shorting the premium, which means you need that it expires worthless. In put option, when the current price is above your strike price, this option will expire worthless and if it expires worthless, you collect all the premium. So after 3 months, if Apple did not get below $100, you basically collected the $100 premium. And now you're going to ask how you lose money with this strategy. The risk of this strategy is when the stock price at the expiry is below your strike price. In our case, it's below $100. And whenever it expires below your strike price, you need to buy 100 shares of that stock at the strike price that you did set. In our case, in our case, if Apple expired below $100 at the expiry, I need to buy 100 shares at $100, which is $10,000. So when you're selling a put option, you need to have the capital of at least 100 shares of the premium you're selling. In this case, I need to have at least $10,000 in my account to sell this put option. The closer we are to the current price, the higher the premium will be because it has a higher probability that it expires below your strike price but you collect a higher premium and the more out of the money you go the lower premium will be because the chance to expire worthless is really high so you can guess by selling a put option you can set strike prices that you're willing to own 100 shares of that stock at that price you'll basically get paid to own 100 shares of this price that you want so now let's explain the call option when you're buying a call option your potential profit is to the infinity because theoretically the stock price can go up infinitely and your maximum risk is the premium that you're paying now let's talk about selling a call option this can be really risky if you don't know what you're doing it's the same idea as selling a put option but instead of betting the stock price will go up you're betting that the stock price will go down or you're willing to short 100 shares at the strike price that you're setting. Let's take an example. Currently Apple is $125 and I sold a call option at $130. This premium is $2 and the stock expires after 2 months. So after 2 months, if Apple is below $130, you'll get the $200 premium. If not, if it's above 130, for example, if it went to 140 you, and it expired, you need to short 100 shares at 130. So if you were unlucky and the stock price went up a lot, you're going to get into big losses. A way to reduce this risk is you can sell covered calls, which I'm going to explain in the option strategies. When you sell a put or a call, you can always close your position before expiry. It can be either in loss or profit, so you won't get exercised. Now in the next part, I'm going to explain the Greeks, which you'll understand in details how these premiums change. Now for the Greeks. The key factors that can change the premium price are the price of the underlying assets, time, and implied volatility. So let's start with the delta. Delta has the biggest impact on the option price. The value of delta will show you how much the premium will change if the stock moves by $1. Let's say we have a stock which is at $10, delta is 0.3 and our option premium is $1. If the stock goes from $10 to 11, the premium will go from 1 to 1.3. Delta can be used as the probability of the option if it will expire in the money. For example, let's say if delta is 0.5, it has 50% chance that the stock will expire in the money. Delta goes up when the option goes further in the money and down when it goes out of the money. So now you understand what's the delta, I will explain the gamma. Gamma will measure how much delta will change if the stock moves by $1. Let's take the same example, if the stock is $10, Delta is 0.3 and Gamma is 0.05. If the stock went from $10 to $11, the premium will go from 1 to 1.3. But on the next move from $11 to $12, the value of Delta will change. And how can we decide that value? It's basically the new Delta value plus the Gamma. If the Gamma is 0.05, the new Delta will be 0.35. The premium will go from 1.3 
to 1.65 because we added the new delta value which is 0.35 now the theta which is the time decay theta will show you how much the option will lose its value after each day for example if theta is 0.05 the option will lose 0.05 after each passing day that's why when you sell options like selling puts or calls time will work your way if you buy options time it's working against you on the same example if the stock is ten dollars and the option price is one dollar with theta equal to minus 0.02 if the next day the stock is at the same price the option will decrease by 0.02 so it's currently at 0.92 after 10 days if the stock stayed at ten dollars 0.02 times 10 that's 0.2 the option will go from 1 to 0.8 which is 20 percent return and the last one it's vega vega will show you how much the premium will change if the implied volatility increase or decrease by one percent for example if vega is 0.05 and implied volatility decreased by one percent and the option price is one dollar the premium will go down by 0.05 the implied volatility can go up if there's earnings announcement dividend or any political kind of stuffs so implied volatility can be a good thing or bad thing if you use it in your advantage so let's get back into our original example the stock is ten dollars delta is 0.2 gamma is 0.05 theta is equal to minus 0.02 and vega is equal to 0.01 and we have our option price which is one dollar the first day the stock went from ten dollars to 11 delta is equal to 0.2 so our option price will go from one dollar to 1.2 but a day passed we need to decrease the value of the theta so the option went from 1 to 1.2 and theta is equal to minus 0.02 we're left with the premium which is 1.18 the second day the stock went up again by one dollars the premium is currently 1.18 the new delta value is the delta plus the gamma which is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.05 which is 0 0.25 so we add on 1.18 0 0.25 and a day pass we decrease the delta value which is 0 0.02 we're left with 1.41 so the stock went from ten dollars to twelve dollars which is 20 percent return but in the option price you can see it's leveraged it's 40 percent return and on the same example we can add the vega which is the implied volatility if there's some upcoming news and the implied volatility starts to go up each one percent change it will be added on the premium price so if vega is 0.01 and the implied volatility went up by one percent you'll add on the premium which is 1.40 0.01 it will be 1.42 so this is the greeks and now you understand better how the premium will change depending on the price the volatility and time and with these factors you can make your own trading strategies and now let's talk about some option strategies so till now you know how to buy options their risks and their maximum potential and you know how to sell options which is puts and calls and you know their maximum potential and their risks so in this part i'm going to talk about some option strategies that you can apply in your trading so the first thing was buying and selling options the second thing that i'm going to talk about is covered calls let's take for example you have 100 shares of a stock and you want to sell at a specific target what an average investor does is that they just wait to reach their target and they will sell but in options you can implement something that you can generate an income and lower your cost basis instead of waiting so as you know when you sell calls and if the option expires above your strike price you need to short 100 shares at that price you see where i'm going with this so instead of holding the 100 shares and you have a specific target you can sell calls at the strike price which you want to sell so now you can sell weekly calls at the strike price that you want to sell and instead of waiting weeks or months after each month that it did not reach your target you'll collect premiums so the first week i sold the calls at the strike price that i want to sell it did not reach i collected premium which you're basically reducing your cost basis to if your average is 100 now your average is 99 
the next week again, your average is 98. You can always reduce and whenever it reaches target, for example, let's say at 105, since you have 100 shares and each option contract will go short 100 shares, will cancel each other, that means you'll close your position. The only risk in this strategy is that if the stock went much more, you need to take profit at the strike price that you're taking. But for me, that's not a risk because I'm a trader and I'm not in love with the stock. So I'm not an investor. I don't buy and hold forever. I just try to find quick opportunities and sell. So that was my target and that's where I want to sell. So I don't care if it went up more. So the worst case scenario with the strategy is that you're going to reduce your cost basis and sell at the profit, which personally, I don't see that as a risk. This is the profit loss chart for the strategy. Now the third strategy, which is the bull spread. With this strategy, you buy calls at a specific strike price and you sell the same number of calls at a higher strike price. And both call options should expire the same time. With this strategy, you're basically betting that the stock price will go up. So when you're selling the call and buying a call at a lower strike, you're reducing the amount of premium paid. But with this strategy, your upside potential is limited and your downside is limited too. In order to make profit with this strategy, the stock price needs to go up. This is a chart that you'll understand better how it works. So you see the upside and downside are limited, but you reduce the amount of premium that you paid. Now the fourth strategy is the same thing, but it's a bear spread, which you're betting that the price will go down. With a bear spread, you're buying a put option and you're selling a put option at a lower price. And of course, the same expiry. Same as the bull spread, your loss are limited and your maximum profit potential is limited, but you reduce the amount of premium paid. I will show you again the PNL chart, which you'll understand better how it works. The fifth strategy that I want to talk about is the long straddle. With this strategy, you're basically betting that the stock price will go a significant move upward or downward. You can make profit if the stock goes up or down, but out of a specific range. This is how it works. So with this strategy, you're buying a call and put option at the same expiry with the same strike price. Theoretically, your maximum potential is unlimited and your maximum loss is the amount of premium paid for both contracts. The downside of this strategy is that with the time decay, both values of the contracts, they will go down. But if the stock does a move, a big move upward or downward, for example, let's say if the value started to go up, the value of the, the premium of put option will start to go down but the potential of the call option is unlimited. That's where you're going to make profit. The same thing if the stock price starts to drop significantly. The value of the call option will go to zero, but the premium of the put option will go up and it can easily do 100-200% moves. So the maximum loss in one contract is 100% and the profit potential is unlimited. You just want for the stock price to go up or down. As you can see on the chart, you have two break-even points and you can make a profit when the stock makes a large move in one direction or the other. The sixth strategy that I want to talk about is the long strangle. This strategy is very similar to the previous strategy, but you're going to buy out of the money calls and puts. With this strategy, you're betting that the stock price will do a very large move either to the upward or downward. Sometimes you can use this strategy if there's an FDA approval, earnings, on stocks that you expect a news either bad or good. Wherever it goes, you can make profit. This is the PNL chart. You can see that the stock needs to do a large move to make profit. And your maximum loss is the amount of premium paid. The seventh strategy that I'm going to talk about is the long call butterfly spread. This strategy is different from the previous ones. The previous ones, you were expecting significant moves to the upward or downward. With this strategy, you're basically betting that the stock price will not move a lot. With this strategy, you need to buy one in the money call option at a lower strike. At the same time, you need to sell two at the money call options and you need to buy one out of the money call option. 
So you need to buy one in the money and one out of the money call option and sell two at the money call option. It can be involved either four calls or four puts. This is the PNL chart that you're going to see. Your maximum potential is when the stock remains unchanged. You can see you have maximum loss and maximum profit potential, but you make a loss when the stock does either upward or downward move. The ninth strategy is the iron condor. With this strategy, you're holding a bull spread and a bear spread. When the stock is not volatile, you can use in your advantage. And this strategy is used for that. With this strategy, you're going to earn a low premium, but it has a very high probability that you get that premium. So you can take this to make consistent income. This is the chart, you'll understand better how it works. So as you see from the chart, you have a really you have a high probability to end up in profit, but it will be low premiums. And the last one, you have the iron butterfly. This is similar to the previous ones, but instead of buying or selling out of the money or in the money call options and puts, all the options will be at the money. This strategy generates high probability to make an income, but of course with low gains and this can be applied on vo non-volatile stocks and you have a really high chance to end up in profit it can be used on large cap stocks like apple there because they are not volatile trading options can be really risky and if you don't know what you're doing you can lose everything you have so now i'm going to tell you seven mistakes that you should avoid while trading options new traders usually like to buy out of the money calls because usually they are cheaper but there's a reason why it's cheap. Because most of the time, they expire worthless. You can trust me on that. Most of my strategies lately are selling out of the money calls and puts. And more than 90%, they just expire worthless. So when you buy this cause, there's a high chance that you lose your investment. The second mistake that you should avoid is not understanding the leverage of options. As said, options, each contract represents 100 shares. Let's take an example on Apple. Instead of buying 100 shares at 120, which is $12,000 investment, you go and buy 30 contracts of call options at $4, which is again $12,000. With these 30 contracts, you're actually controlling 3,000 shares of Apple, which is worth $360,000. If this contract expires worthless, you'll simply lose everything. But with shares, Apple needs to go to zero to lose everything, which is super unlikely. The third mistake is that you should have a plan. Either selling options or buying options. You need to take the worst case scenario and the best case scenario. And when you buy options, you usually need to take profit because one move to the other side that you're betting, it can go back very quickly to break even and even to loss. So have a strategy and have a plan. And stick to that plan, never change. Because if you sell after one day or two days, the option can go up 50% up, 50% down. It can, it's really volatile. The fourth mistake is underestimating the time decay. I explained Theta previously. If the stock stayed the same price after 10 days with a short expiry, the option can lose up to 30% of its value. Me with options, I just sell puts and calls because I like the fact that time will work my way. Even though sometimes I'm wrong in the direction, but with the time decay, I'll be in profit. If you're going to buy call options and you expect a move within the next one or two months, you should not buy a call option expiring after three months. You should buy at least after one, two years. Because the longer the expiry, the time decay will have less effect. This is a graph that you can see the effect of the time decay. When it gets closer to expiry, it will be more effective. The fifth mistake is trading options which are not liquid. When you trade the stock, you just have that one stock. There's nothing else to trade. But the options for that stock, there's so many options. There's many strikes, many expiry dates. So options are less liquid. And if the stock is not liquid, those options will definitely not be liquid and try to avoid those options as much as possible. The sixth mistake is not taking profits on options that you're short. For example, if you're selling puts or calls, 2-3% move in the underlying stock 
can get your options into 80 to 70 percent profit your maximum profit potential with the shorts is 100 percent because you're collecting the premium if you already reached the 80 percent of the potential it's, it's a good idea to take profit because you're clearing up some cash because each contract takes a place in your portfolio of at least 100 shares so if you short on a tesla put at 500 and if you cover that position you're freeing up fifty thousand dollar worth of capital in your portfolio and if you already reached the 80 percent of the potential why not taking profit and sometimes if the stock makes a sudden move in the direction that you don't want it can go directly back into break even and even loss so as said it's always good idea to take profit for two reasons the seventh mistake is not checking upcoming events because when there's earnings or something else on the stock implied volatility can go really up and if implied volatility goes up the stock price will go up with him so if you're selling an option it's bad but if you're long on the option it can be good so all it's always good to check what's coming up next because it can affect because it can affect your trade